black water, keep on rolling. Mississippi moon, won't you keep on shining on the old black water, keep on rolling. Mississippi moon, won't you keep on shining on Last season, when you were keeping up with college football, of course, you know, it's the usual suspects that get at or near the top of the standings. Your Alabamas, your Ohio States, your Oregons, Florida States, teams like that. But was Ole Miss on your mind when it came to potentially getting to the college football playoff? Well, as the season progressed, they became more and more relevant in terms of maybe making the top four. Ole Miss was one of the surprises in 2014, winning their first seven games, including a win over Power Alabama. But as you might know, sometimes for the upstart teams, things will happen that will really test them because of adversity. Now other teams know how good they are, and if you have injuries that hit some of your best players, like they did um, Denzel Kimdichi, the linebacker, as well as their all-everything receiver, Laquan Treadwell, makes winning naturally that much tougher. And they discovered that in back-to-back -back losses to LSU and Auburn that, you know, it's hard to stay undefeated. And at the end of the season, getting blanked by Arkansas and then having it all crumble in the Peach Bowl against TCU, losing 42-3, showed that Ole Miss, although the season was full of some bright spots, the team still has a way to go to be a complete team. Several members of that team from a year ago are back for Hugh Freeze's squad, and some of those guys were from that great class of 2013 that was a top five class in the country, and that did include Laquan Treadwell. Last season against Auburn, game number nine of the season, even though he had double digits he catches that game and over 100 yards and a touchdown, he also broke his ankle in the process, and that was it for 2014 for him. Looks like he's at or near full strength. He is 6'2", 230, so he's going to be a reliable target for the quarterback, but also he's going to be hard to bring down, too, for any defender who faces him. But having Treadwell back for his junior year will help, and we'll see if his stock will improve. And if he has a real big year, he might join the NFL and forgo his senior year. A lot of people think that the offensive lineman that's most valuable on this team, Larry Tunson, will do the same. Another member of that 2013 class that's lived up to all the hype Tunsil is no question the complete offensive tackle, and it'd be a shock if he came back in 2016 at Ole Miss. Speaking of linemen, Aaron Morris, if this guy can stay healthy, um, we'll see him reach his full potential. He's already had two ACL surgeries, if you can believe that. And a freshman that could play right away on the interior, it is Javon Patterson. Now, tied in, Evan Ingram, you'll have his services. The backfield looks like it'll be uh, Jalen Walton, as well as Jaden, um, as well as uh, Jordan Williams, excuse me, and Akeem Judd. Those three guys will really be into the mix, but Walton figures to get the bulk of the carries. Quarterback's going to be the biggest mystery, in my opinion, for the Rebels, because of the fact that Bo Wallace, who had been there for a while, has now moved on. Chad Kelly, the former Clemson quarterback, figures to have the starting edge as far as signal color for Ole Miss entering 2015. But you could have a guy um, merging in there like Devontae Kincaid. Heard good things about him. And Ryan Buchanan, who had a strong, a strong spring. So Kelly, right now, I probably think it's his job to lose. But it's not a guarantee. Offensively, last season, Ole Miss had their struggles, especially in their losses. And the turnover bug really bit them. 25 turnovers is what they had in 2014. Entering this season, the defense, though, seemed to make up for it with 32 takeaways. That's right. That's why Ole Miss was positive in the uh, takeaway category, because the defense did their part. Matter of fact, they didn't give up very many points in most of their games. Of course, TCU was an exception to the rule, but for the most part, the team played pretty good defense. Number one in the country in scoring D was Ole Miss. And the defensive line, as good as they were last year, could be even better because of the maturity of Robert Camdichi, one of the best defensive tackles in the country, and yes, another member of that recruiting class from two years ago that was so invaluable for Hugh Freeze's team. But Camdichi, he's going to command double teams, and that could allow um, Isaac Gross to really step in, and also Woodrow Harrison at nose tackle. He's a load, 6'3 and 315. Good luck on blocking him if you're the offense. And Marquise Haynes at defensive end, he is going to be a pretty good pass rusher from all accounts that I have been reading about. Now, because you have Haynes, you can use a guy like C.J. Johnson at linebacker, the former defensive end, figures to compliment Denzel Kimdichie, that's, um, that's Robert's um, brother. Uh, Denzel, last season, he had ankle issues as well, so his stats were not the highest that they could have been. But healthy now, and if he can stay healthy, 
Ole Miss is going to have a front seven that's going to be strong linebacker-wise and especially defensive line-wise. Secondary, well, that's pretty much the Riddler right there. In other words, the question mark. And without the services of Cody Pruitt and single West Golson anymore, it will be a challenge for that Ole Miss D to continue their fine play. But the safety positions, Ole Miss shouldn't have much to worry about with Tony Corner, probably one of those guys that flew under the radar as far as that great 2013 class. Got to remember something. You know, Robert Kimdichie was the number one defensive tackle in the country in high school football, and Treadwell was the number one receiver prep-wise in high school football. And, you know, Larry McTunsell, from, you know, from what I remember reading a few years ago, was the number one overall player amongst college, amongst high school athletes. So, you know, when you land three guys like that, sometimes a guy like Tony Carter can fly under the radar, but you have him back at safety, and I think he's underrated in all honesty. And complimenting him will be Tony Hilton. So they're going to be strong at safety. Special teams, Will Gleason, averaged 43 yards per punt. That's pretty good. You have him, once again, for his services. And at place kicking, Gary Wonderlich. And this guy had a strong 2014 to close out. Six of eight field goals. And he'll handle the kickoff duties last season, 13 touchbacks. So you have some valuable feet right there in Gleason and the Wonderlich. The schedule for Ole Miss, first two games should be wins. UT Martin and Fresno State. Both come to Mississippi, but game number three, yeah, you'd love to see Alabama later in the year, but SEC West, you're going to see them at some point. You'll get them in mid-September, September 19th, to be more exact, at Tuscaloosa, as uh, Buford T. Justice from Smokey and the Bandit might say, this game is an attention getter. That's right. Alabama, their only regular season loss came to Ole Miss just one year ago, so um, Ole Miss better be aware that they're going to get a pretty uh, angry, pretty pissed off Alabama team as Ole Miss has to play them on the road. Natural rival for Ole Miss from the east is Vanderbilt. Commodores get to come to your place too. That'll sweeten the pot a little bit. But you got to go to Florida to begin the month of October. Florida's got one heck of a defense. And then New Mexico State October 10th. October 17th, this is a game that could be one of those upset specials for the year at Memphis against the Tigers. You might be saying, why Memphis? Hey, Memphis is a pretty good offense. Dustin Pointe can coach. And besides, Memphis almost won at UCLA a year ago, only losing by a touchdown to the Bruins in the high-scoring game. So this will be a good test for the uh, for the Rebel defense and a good test for Ole Miss and Gerald because it's a road game. And you play A&M the following week at home against a high-powered Aggie offense, and you go to Auburn, a heartbreaking loss from a year ago. That will be on Halloween, and this time you got to play them at Jordan-Hare Stadium. November, Arkansas at home. Remember, the Razorbacks blanked Ole Miss a year ago. And you get the bye week, I think, at a good time. Yeah, it's late in the year. But remember, Ole Miss looked like they were running out of gas at the end of last season. So this time getting that bye week in November can't hurt. Ole Miss is hoping that November 21st, the next game against LSU, is a revenge game. Uh, Tigers just nipped them a year ago. And then at Mississippi State in the Egg Bowl on November 28th to close out the regular season. Biggest thing for Ole Miss will be the health of their star players. Talking about Denzel Kimdichie at linebacker, and of course we're talking about um, Laquan Treadwell. Treadwell, remember, is not just a good um, player in terms of playmaking, but also, too, in terms of downfield blocking. If they lose Treadwell again, Ole Miss's offense could very well pick, pick up from where they left off at the end of last season, which was in sinking sand. Got to keep Treadwell healthy and those guys healthy, and the development of quarterback – is going to be the big key. There's just uncertainty right now as far as QB. But I still think the defense is going to be damn good. And I think that Q Freeze has something good going at Ole Miss, despite the fact that last year they didn't finish on a high note. I got them going 9-3. and three. I got them going 9-3 and three and finishing third in the very tough SEC West. That's my look at Ole Miss. Catch you next time. Roll on, Mississippi. Mississippi, hold on.